Welcome back to Combat Mission, where we are going to take a look at Electronic Warfare, or EW. What it is, and how it works in Combat Mission. Essentially, in Combat Mission, EW boils down to communications jamming. In extremely simple terms, communication equipment operates on specific frequencies or channels. Different systems might use different channels, or a range of channels, and operate within those channels with different strengths depending on the characteristics of the individual system. A squad leader's handheld radio, for example, might operate on a couple of channels at relatively low power. A larger vehicle mounted radio might be capable of operating over more channels at higher power levels. Electronic warfare involves knowing or finding those channels and broadcasting into them to interfere with enemy communications. So if we wanted to conduct an EW attack targeting our squad leader's handheld radio, we find the channels that it uses and spam them with noise. Doing so with a greater power level than the system we're attacking might jam it completely, lower power levels might degrade the system or even have no effect. The vehicle mounted radio, on the other hand, is a more powerful system using more channels, so we might need a more powerful EW system to counter it. What might jam a small handheld radio might not bother the communication systems of a vehicle. Obviously, electronic warfare is infinitely more complicated than this, but that's a good enough illustration for our purposes. In Combat Mission's modern titles, electronic warfare is represented as a strength level for each side. This is a little bit like the weather. It's a preset condition for each battle, and just like the weather, you can check it in-game using the Conditions tab. Each side's strength level, non, light, medium or strong, indicates how badly the other side's communications are affected. Non is pretty self-explanatory, everything just works. Light electronic warfare degrades handheld radios and handheld satellite PDA communication links, as well as increasing UAV call-in times and degrading UAV spotting abilities. Medium completely shuts down handheld devices, both radios and PDA satcoms, and degrades man-packed and vehicle-mounted radios as well as satellite communication systems. UAV call-in times and spotting abilities are further degraded, with other off-map support call-in times for artillery and air support lengthened and precision artillery rendered non-functional. On top of this, on-map surface-to-air missile systems start to be affected and their ability to detect and engage air targets is reduced. Strong electronic warfare blocks all on-map radio and satellite communications. All call-in times are greatly increased and on-map SAMs and UAV spotting are heavily degraded. The level is set by the scenario designer in the data tab in the mission editor, but there's also an option in the quick battle setup screen. Two important points to note about EW in Quick Battles. First, it has a points cost. Each level of Electronic Warfare docks roughly 3% of your total points for force selection. So going into a fight with a strong Electronic Warfare level may give you a significant advantage, but it effectively means that your force will be 91% the strength of your opponents. How meaningful that will be will obviously depend. Secondly, because EW state is a condition set before the battle starts, it's not going to be a surprise for your opponent. If you're not setting up the quick battle and you would like some EW, you're going to have to ask the person you're playing against. If you're the one setting up the battle, it's not very sporting to give yourself electronic warfare without giving your opponent the option and a really good way to waste all the time you spent setting up the game in the first place. So, that's the mechanics of how electronic warfare works in combat mission. We essentially have four key effects of varying levels. Communications degradation, decreased drone spotting effectiveness, decreased close air support and artillery responsiveness, and decreased surface-to-air missile effectiveness. The tactical implications of all of these should be pretty obvious. Although drones and especially aircraft are generally not that common in the modern combat mission games, artillery is a very significant asset for everyone, and being able to impose longer call-in times on the enemy is an incredible ability. Obviously, the effectiveness of delaying enemy artillery will depend greatly on who that enemy is. 
In shock force, for example, NATO call-in times are generally pretty fast, and while increasing them could slow things down somewhat, it's not something a NATO player can't work around. The Syrians, on the other hand, already have long artillery call-in times. It can already be quite difficult to use effectively. Extending those call-in times further could potentially be crippling. The effects of degrading other communications, basically breaking up C2 chains, is harder to judge. The human player is essentially the pixel trip and hive mind, and can see the entire picture anyway, while the AI doesn't have the capability to process that kind of information and act accordingly. So degrading comms can increase spotting times. Units that have been communicated a spotting contact by another unit generally identify those spots much faster once they get line of sight, and that could be important, but it's hard to say, and very situational. Trying to work around the problem by decreasing dispersion and clumping units up to enable visual and verbal comms may or may not be worth it from a strictly combat mission effectiveness point of view. Given that the player can see and react regardless, it may very well be preferable to remain dispersed and suffer some penalties to spotting than it would be to group up and get hit by artillery. So given this, electronic warfare in combat mission may well be best suited as a scenario design tool to enhance or degrade opposing forces in pursuit of balance, narrative, or challenge. That is a quick rundown of how electronic warfare works in combat mission. Pretty straightforward stuff. There isn't really that much to talk about. Hope you all found this one useful. If you'd like to watch these videos early and support the channel, you can do so via Patreon and YouTube memberships. Whether you do or not, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.